Today we are rebuilding the front differential breather on a 2000 Jeep Cherokee. All right, today we are dealing with a failed attachment point for the vent hole on a Data 30 front axle. Very common failure. The nylon plastic doesn't last. And so the solution today is actually a 3 8 to 3 8 hose barb from the hardware store. As the differential operates, it produces heat and the oil inside expands. If there were no breather, pressure inside the differential would increase and oil would be forced out around the axle seals. However, the cost-cutting vent attachments sometimes provided by OEMs can be prone to failure. People have come up with many solutions for this problem. One of the most thorough involves tapping the hole for an MPT type fitting. However, if you plan to put steel filings into the differential, which the tap will do, you need to be prepared to change the oil and thoroughly clean inside immediately after. That wasn't on our list today, although it does need to be done soon. Our next best solution was a push fit inline hose barb. These are readily available in brass, which is stronger than the plastic OE device, but softer than steel. If a stray brass filing enters the oil during this fitment, it's less likely to destroy a bearing. We have here a pair of hose barbs. This particular one fits in with no resistance, but fills the hole at 0.350. So we need something a little larger than 0.350, but if we come to this one, we're at about 0.405, 0.406. So lacking a lathe, I've chucked this hose barb into my drill press, and we'll just try filing it down a bit until it's the right size. Ideally, this should be an iterative process with frequent checks to see if the target size has been reached. It's easy to remove material, it's somewhat more difficult to add it back if we overshoot the target size. Once we hit the mark, the surface is given a light treatment with a knife sharpening block just to get the roughest bits removed, but sandpaper also would have worked. That done, the next step was to apply silicone adhesive to the end which would live in the vent hole. Although the brass is capable of forming a tight seal against steel, we don't know if our hacked machining job actually resulted in a circular fitment. So the friction fit will hold the fitting in place while the sealant will help keep it watertight. And there it is, nice and snug. Now we need to rebuild the breather hose. Okay, next step is to actually get this old breather tube out of here. It has some sort of a heat wrap on it down here, but that heat wrap is shredded farther below, so we might not be able to reuse it. That's because it goes past the exhaust manifold here. We do still have our uh, breather cap on top here, though, which we can reuse with new pipes, so cool. The old hose had made friends with the exhaust manifold a few times and was completely trashed. I think at this point we can just pull on it. We picked up a meter or so of gas line hose at the hardware store and went to work cutting a replacement to the right length. Gas line hose is oil and gas resistant and should survive longer in this location. We also needed to replace the high temperature sleeve that was not reusable on the ruined hose. Before trusting anything from eBay to be fireproof though, it's best to check it yourself. So the hose was sleeved and secured with stainless steel zip ties to get it through the exhaust manifold area and then routed to its final locations on both ends. The initial plan was just to zip tie it to the main wiring loom like before. After some careful thought though, we took a piece of scrap fiberglass and drilled eight holes. Four of the holes support two vertical zip ties securing the plate to the wiring harness. Four more support two horizontal ties holding the breather hose in a neat vertical orientation. Finally, the hose is also secured below and pipe clamped to the hose barb. Job done. Has anyone seen my phone?